I spoke with Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. He's a member of the Senate Foreign Relations, the author of the book Deception. Senator, thank you very much for joining me. And I want to start first with Senator Menendez, not himself, but that the media is asking every U.S. senator, almost as a litmus, litmus test question, whether he should resign or not, and he hasn't even had a trial. So your feeling about this litmus test question gets put to U.S. senators. You know, I'm kind of old-fashioned. I believe in the whole idea of innocent until proven guilty. Doesn't mean I'm going to weigh in one way or another on his particular trial, but everybody deserves their day in court, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. So I'm not going to weigh in on it because I don't know the facts of the case and I don't want to make a conclusion. Each juror will have to make that decision, you know, based on the facts. Now let me turn to the potential government shutdown. Um, the Senate is proposing a short-term continuing resolution. Part of it is um, suggests some funding for Ukraine, and I know that you object to what is provided in that short-term, uh, that continuing resolution. Uh, it's about six and six and a half billion dollars to Ukraine. What is your objection? Well, you know, Greta, we don't have any money. It's not like there's a rainy day fund or a surplus or a pot of gold sitting around here with money. Uh, we borrowed a trillion dollars just in the last three months. Ostensibly, there was a debt ceiling deal, you know, a couple of months ago. So we're going to raise the debt ceiling, but we have these caps. Well, the money for Ukraine isn't counted. They just say it doesn't count at all. It'll be counted as emergency, which means it exceeds the cap. So they're already breaking their word on the spending caps. And so we just can't give money we don't have. To me, it's essentially borrowing money from China to send it to Ukraine. I think it makes us weaker. I think our national security's biggest threat is our debt. And so I'm just not for it. Is, do you know what the money is designated for? I mean, and do we, do, are we tracking where the money is going to Ukraine? I know that we've, you know, the United States has been quite generous with Ukraine. Where, where's the money going? Is, is anyone monitoring it? So there's 113 billion that's been given so far, and this has been one of my complaints. There, for, for the Afghan war, there was a special inspector general for Afghanistan called the SIGAR. I've met him several times. He has a team of 100 economists and technicians who monitor the spending, and he's found billions of dollars that was wasted and stolen in Afghanistan. He would be perfect for this job. So I forced a vote on this uh, about a month ago and lost, but I think we should have an inspector general monitoring the money. It's the least we can do. I mean, Ukraine has a history of being one of the most corrupt nations in the world. So does Russia, for that matter. But between the oligarchs in both countries, there's a lot of money that's been stolen, and we just can't do it without oversight. And so, no, I don't think there's adequate oversight. But we do know that from official readings and accountings of the $113 billion, about a third of it's being spent not on the military, but on their government. We are paying their government workers. In fact, the most galling thing out of this recent deal is the Biden administration has said, if there is a shutdown, they will continue to pay Ukrainian government workers. In essence, they will say that Ukrainian government workers are essential and will be paid even if we don't pay U.S. government workers. That to me is just appalling. Senator, there was a recent picture of you created by artificial intelligence, which I actually thought was quite clever, of you in a red robe. It turns out not to have been a picture you took. But it raises the issue of artificial intelligence. Is there—now, this was obviously meant to be funny or teasing, but in a more serious note, do you worry about artificial intelligence? Is it a danger? And is the United States Senate doing anything about, about artificial intelligence? You know, artificial intelligence as a technology doesn't worry me or concern me. I'm not afraid of technological advancement. I am afraid of what government can do to abuse its power. But let's say, for example, classified material. We have 25 years of classified material, millions and millions of documents. Artificial intelligence could help us to go through that to start revealing to the public things that should have been revealed years ago. However, I worry about artificial intelligence being used by people like the FBI or the Department of Homeland Security to go onto Twitter or social media and troll through all of our information to try to censor our speech. But that gets back to a fundamental question. 
of will or can we restrain government to protect our Bill of Rights, our freedom of speech, our freedom of in association and interaction. So really this is a question of governmental power. If you control governmental power and don't let government abuse their power, then artificial intelligence won't be a problem. But if artificial intelligence is used by people who will abuse their power, it can be a great deal of problem and compound the problems we already have. But really to me, the ultimate oversight has to be restraining uh, governmental power and not letting it get out of hand. Senator, thank you very much for joining me, sir. Thank you.